Our opening, our opening song is All Are Welcome. Please stand. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <laughs> Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree but then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake 
and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again, but the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and ordered, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb, the word of the Lord. A reading from the, Saint, the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? And how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that came down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. We all know how unnerving and intimidating it is when a group of people glances our way and begins to speak in low tones so that we cannot hear what is being said. We cannot help but think they are probably saying something uncomplimentary about us. It is an even worse feeling when we walk up and politely ask what they were talking about and they fall dead silent. Yes, how utterly unnerving it is. In today's Gospel from St. John the Evangelist, something similar is happening. The Jewish people are murmuring and complaining about Jesus Christ's divine revelation because of their lack of faith. Their murmuring and doubt and practical objection to his claim that I am the living bread that came down from heaven simply because they know his father and who his mother is, clearly demonstrates that they have completely misunderstood the sign of the loaves and the fishes, and furthermore have not listened very well to all the preaching and teaching of the divine teacher. Christ answers their misunderstanding and unbelief with a stern and quite clear command, stop murmuring among yourselves. Jesus calls them and each of us to faith and a more profound understanding of this sign because sometimes what we claim we know does not square up with reality. The people in this gospel pericope think they know Jesus' origin when they say, is this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Therefore, the people think they know the full truth of which he is and what he is not capable of doing and that it is not possible for Jesus to have come down from heaven. How often do we find ourselves in this same crowd of people murmuring and complaining, picking and choosing what church teachings we're going to follow? We're called to follow all that Holy Mother Church teaches, all that's been divinely revealed in the deposit of faith, all revealed in sacred scripture, 
all revealed in sacred tradition. We're not to pick and choose what we want to believe. We're called to believe all that is taught in faith and morals. There are even people who doubt the true presence of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. There's people that doubt his claim that he will be with us until the end of the age. Hopefully we don't find ourselves with the people always murmuring and complaining. The people that are murmuring and complaining against Jesus' actions that equate him with being God, claiming he is divine, which to the Jewish people was an obstacle and a blaspheme. Nevertheless, the Good Shepherd is ever so patient and tolerant, not just with the people in today's gospel, but with every one of us. Christ commands the murmuring to stop because it does absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing more than limit the human heart to know through faith who and what Jesus claims to be. Only through opening ourselves to be taught by God, as Jesus tells us in the Gospel, and I quote, everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Can the people in the Gospel and you and I come to the realization that Jesus Christ is that living bread come down from heaven, and whoever eats this bread will live forever? Only with this deep knowledge and ascent of our faith can they and we receive the greatest gift that God offers us in the Holy Eucharist, his only begotten Son, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Moreover, this great gift of, gift of God's life must always be received in a state of grace, where our souls are free from mortal sin. It is another grave sin to receive Jesus Christ and to not be free from the stain of mortal sin on our souls. For the true bread that comes down from heaven gives life and gives it abundantly. But only when we each surrender ourselves to listen to the Father and to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Holy Eucharist is that spiritual food that sustains us, food that sustains our earthly journey of discipleship, that our spiritual journey, and calls each of us to believe in faith. Recall today's first reading from the first book of Kings, where the miraculous provision of bread in the wilderness that sustains the prophet Elijah provides for his physical journey, that journey to Horeb, the mountain of God. Christ offers his disciples the food of his teaching as well as his own flesh for our journey to eternal life. There is no easy road to eternal life, the multiplication of the loaves was not simply to feed the multitude. It was a sign meant to call forth belief, faith, in what Jesus Christ was teaching all who listen concerning himself. The way to the Father and eternal life is only through Jesus Christ. That's what he said in the gospel. That is why he is the bread of life. Sometimes our dying to self can lead us to say what the prophet Elijah said in today's first reading, and I quote, This is enough, O Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's, end quote. It's not easy to be a faithful disciple of the Lord. He never said it would be. It doesn't say anywhere in sacred scripture. Jesus didn't say this is going to be easy. What did he say to the disciples? Pick up your cross and follow after me. It's not easy to live the gospel, but God gives us the grace in the sacraments to do that. It can even be more difficult for each of us to teach as Jesus Christ did. If we are to be true to what we are to live and to teach, we need the bread of life, the Holy Eucharist, that spiritual food to revive us and to keep us on track. Christ's words of life bring us hope and strength. So the daily challenge is not to get discouraged, but to hand ourselves over to the nourishment of word and sacrament that God offers us at every sacrifice of the Holy Mass, nourishment that surely carries on our life's journey toward eternal life. Today's gospel assures us that 
We have all that we need. The one stipulation given to us by Jesus is that we must trust, have faith, and believe. This does not simply mean an intellectual assent to the reality and truth of Jesus' words. It means that we must declare indeed that we listen to Jesus Christ and we accept in our hearts the strength and the gift that he offers us in the Holy Eucharist. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became the end. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are about to offer and receive Jesus Christ our Lord, that living bread which comes down from heaven. As the Father draws us to his Son, let us pray with confidence. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection and strengthening of the church wherever she is persecuted, and that the peace of Christ will bring an end to all violent conflict in the world, we pray to the Lord. For all civil leaders and government officials, that they be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the strengthening of marriage and family life, and for all those preparing for marriage, that the Lord will fill them with virtue and a love that endures all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the grace to avoid murmuring and complaining, and to live with greater awareness of God's generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our that the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died 
may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Margaret Meloser, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Lucille Christopher, Errol Walton, and Patricia Lumley, who died this past week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we believe in you and in your Son, our Holy Eucharist. Grant the prayers of this faith community through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by the power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, 
and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world.
us a share in your life. You strengthen our body and our spirit. All praise to you until the end of time. Life-giving bread, saving cup, we offer in thanksgiving.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Go offer the prayer in time of pandemic. Lord Jesus, you came to bring salvation to our world. You humbled yourself to accept death on a cross. Be with us as we confront the current pandemic with courage and hope. Be present to the sick and to those who accompany them in their suffering. Strengthen our medical professionals and caregivers. Comfort families who are separated from one another. Protect those who are at risk of the virus in their work. Grant wisdom to our civic officials and perseverance to scientists. Spare us from the ravages of this illness and console us in our uncertainty and fear. Unite us in hope, enlighten us in faith, and give us the grace as a church to love one another as you have loved us. Through the intercession of our Heavenly Mother Mary and St. Joseph, we make this prayer as we place our trust in you. Amen. A few announcements. Don't forget that next Sunday after the 11 o'clock Mass, out in the uh, area behind the church is our uh, church picnic. You're all invited, so please come. The other thing is our faith formation program is in need of a good, holy catechists. So if you feel God might be calling you to do that, please pray about it. If you feel the Holy Spirit's moving you to do that, you can contact Tia Barger and uh, Judy Seaman in our Faith Formation Program. Have a blessed week.